Hey everybody, it's Tony and I'm back today with a special guest. Um, this woman is a world-renowned comedian. She's a, a singer, um, a host, a model, um, and possibly the last sex symbol we have in America. I know you guys might think it might be Beyonce, but it's not. It is my next guest and I want to introduce you all to the world famous Miss Barbara Carlisle. How you doing today? I am fine. How are you? And uh, when you started naming all those names, I was like, dang, we got other people on here too. <laughs> like, I didn't know it was going to be a community thing. Well, four out of five ain't bad. Oh, man. No, no, it's all for you. All for you. That's all it. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Men always lie to me, so it's okay. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. But how are you doing today? How are you feeling today? Let me start there. I am feeling fine. I was uh, a, a little bit on the sleepy side, but then when I remembered that you and I were going to talk tonight, I said, let me pep myself up and, and, and greet the mass of people that don't know me. Uh, and uh, so I'm, I'm feeling a little bit spiffy now. So. Okay. I'm glad to see that. I mean, you, you look like you got, you know, a, a few dollars in the bank tonight and yeah, yeah. I might have to borrow. And, and with the uh, emphasis, a few, <laughs> thanks to my daughter uh, <laughs> and my uh, community. That's right. That's right. I heard they'll, they'll take it all. They will. They, <laughs> they not only took the, the crab, they took the bucket. Oh, man. Look, you can't be laughing through the whole interview. I'm serious today. No, that's right. I'm not going to laugh no more. Because, yeah, you know, swag on. there you go. Yeah, you see, I got my shoulders out because I give good shoulders. I don't do no head. I give good right. shoulders. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm... No more. Huh. Oh, God. But, of course, if people don't know you seriously, though, you are a comedian. You've been doing comedy for over 40 years at this point. Yeah, 46. Um, and exactly. October 46. 47. Wow, that's a long time, though. Seriously, it is a long time. Not I mean, to you, not to age you, but that that is a long time to be in in one craft and to to do. I, I assume what you love, you know. Yeah. Um, when we talked last time, if people don't know, uh, we did a, a interview a few years back. Uh, we talked about your days uh, in Def Comedy Jam and Comic View, which a lot of us kind of discovered you from. Uh, mm -hmm. If we hadn't seen you seen you live. Um, but what has comedy been like for you overall uh, when you think back on it, when you look at downfalls, the good, the bad, like what do you, what does comedy mean to you now in your mind? Well, um, the whole genre of comedy has uh, did it kind of like a, a U-turn or whatever, uh, so to speak. Uh, it's like the attention span of most uh, comedy fans has shortened. Mm -hmm. uh, basically due to, you know, the, the internet and um, the 10-second, the, the 30-second second videos where people don't really have a chance to, uh, don't, they, they don't want to have to take the time to listen to a, a real joke and um, enjoy comedy. Now, there are still a few, a few uh, comedy, more than a few. There, there are a lot of uh, people who still want to go to a comedy show and hear comedians. Uh, but right. right now, what we are experiencing is a lot of internet people coming through with the little quick videos and they're mm -hmm. getting booked and we're sitting on the sideline looking like, what What happened? Who? Right, right. Nobody told me this is what we're supposed to do. But, yeah, know. I think it, I, I definitely agree. And I was thinking about that earlier. Um, thinking about this conversation about the fact that the role of a comedian has really changed uh, in the eyes of the public. Meaning, like before, I think people really used to revere like comedians and think highly of you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to now, it's like, oh, okay. It's, yeah. it's kind of like that right. thing. They take too long to get to the point. You know what right, I mean? It's, right. it's like um, everything um, has become microwavable. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. food love entertainment if they if they don't if it don't click for them in the first couple of seconds it's it's swipe swipe yeah swipe, you know swipe or no swipey we got to do <laughs> that. that's the best attitude i gotta get i got to be 
uh, uh, door to explore when it comes to comedy. You know? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, and, and now I think uh, even with the comedians themselves, it has changed too, because you see now everybody don't aspire to do like a certain venue so much anymore or a certain club anymore per se, but it's more so like, I need a Netflix special as opposed to all of that now. Yeah, uh, um, I think they uh, are under the impression that if they got a special, um, it would be better than going. And sometimes it could be because it will bring more people out to see you in a club because they're still going to need the club. I mean, they may get so much money, so many dollars for doing a special, but uh, if it's on, if it's streaming, stream, stream, you know what I'm saying. If it's doing that thing, um, people still have to know that it's on and people still have to want to sit there and watch it. Yeah. So you're doing actually the same thing that veteran comics have done. It's just that now you have uh, an outlet, whereas we really had to work toward getting a, a major outlet to do these kind of things. Yeah. Does that make you feel like, though, when you're doing comedy, that you have more pressure on you now to do um, something to reinvent it, it, yourself? It's the only pressure I have is trying to convince the venues and the promoters that I've worked with for years mm -hmm. that they can take a chance at, because that's what they're, you know, really thinking it would be taking a chance. Oh, you, they can fall back on the, oh, you don't have that many followers. You don't have this. You don't have that. What do you mean I don't have that? I have a resume right. that speaks for itself. You yeah. know, I have 60 minutes plus. If, if, if need be, I could stay up there two hours. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm going to give you your 45 minutes to 60 every time I get up there, if that's what I'm called to do. Right. You know, if you call the host, I'm, go I'm still going to do a great job. Mm -hmm. when, when, when you have these other people, even though they may have a, a, a 29 minute whatever special or whatever, are they going to be able to deliver in every venue? Right. You know, I've been uh, tried, true, and tested. True and tested. I've been tested. Right. <laughs> not, not that kind of way. You, uh, I ain't been tested for none of that. But um, so, I mean, it, the, the bottom line is the pendulum of comedy is slowly starting to swing back where people are actually wanting to see uh, old-fashioned comedy. Yeah. More so than this going across the stage talking about everybody. And I'm not saying that veteran comics don't do that because, you know, I go into the audience because basically the audience comes after me. Right. You know? But, um, and I know how to read an audience. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of people are going back to the, I really want to go sit in a comedy club and actually see a comedy show where the show builds. Right. Not where I'm I'm waiting on this person that I've seen for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm thinking, oh, this person, oh, I know if this little 10 seconds funny, they're going to blow it off the roof. Yep. So you're waiting for this person to come out and do something phenomenal, and it never happens. Yeah. And, and they have to realize that they do have to put veteran comics on the show just to make the show good. Because these right. people got no 45 minutes. No. They don't. I mean, you can stand on stage and talk for 45 minutes, bullshit, but what <laughs> are the people walking away with? Mm -hmm. but that's you can it. only say that that N-word is crazy. Right. Oh, he, he out of this world. But when you go back to see it again, what is there to say? Nothing. Then they think that we're hating, that, that we don't appreciate. No, it's the fact that you don't appreciate the art. Mm -hmm. We that was, that was a time when we were happy to just get stage time, right? To build our craft, and you come walking into it making thousands of dollars based on a five, ten second video. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and then you got promoters that you grew with. They, you know, they were just starting out promoters. You were in the comedy game and mm -hmm. you're starting out and they're calling saying, hey, help me out. Can you come do my room, do this? And you go back to these same people and they're telling you stuff like, well, I got to wait till you get your 
followers up. Well, uh, yeah. where are your followers? Right. <laughs> I right. can't bring the show and the people. If yeah. I do that, I don't need you as a promoter. Yeah. I can do my own shows. If I got to bring the people and I got to bring the show, it's my show now. It's no longer Pretty my much. show. Yeah. So that uh bring the followers and and it's just it's it's a it's a pied piper kind of thing right because you saw somebody else do it now you decide you want to do it but when when I, like i say that pendulum swings back around you have to take into consideration you got to go back to the same people that you pushed aside and didn't want to work with and eat crow that's right they say you know but I think I think the thing about it is, if it was me, I think you should bet on what you know best. But yeah. you know, like I told you, I, we I go through the same thing, and I know other people go through the same thing. Even with doing these interviews, uh, that people want to say, well, how many followers do you have? How many subscribers? Or what's your Instagram numbers? And what? And I, and it's like, okay, but I already showed you. I already given you proof that I can deliver on what I'm saying. I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. um, now, I might not be doing comedy, but at the end of the day, I'll, obviously, you can go and look at my interviews and see how I operate, what I do, who I talk to, you know, how things flow. So, but it's the number game for everybody now because they feel like, hey, I want to I wanna get something off of this. But, yeah. you know, what happens when the number game plays out? That's, that's the only thing about it, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, but I believe that it's, it's going to change because nothing stays the same forever, so. It'll, it'll, it'll change. You must change. Yes. I ain't got to change. That's right. That's yeah. what that man told me. Everything got to change. Right? I don't know why he told me that because that's the same thing the last one told me. I'm like, y'all can Do y'all speak? <laughs> talk on the telephone. Tell each other what to say. That's what they did. <laughs> that's what they did. I believe it. I believe it. Oh, man. But speaking of your performances, I want to talk about... Um, the Netflix special. Uh -huh. So we got to grace people's screens once again, thank God. Yeah. On, uh, Netflix's uh Tiffany Haddish, they ready season two. Yeah. Um, this came out, I want to say what 2021 was that? 2021. We come to October 2020 in the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It started in, in uh, 2019, and they decided that because it wasn't, you know just everybody wasn't sequestered right. totally that they would go ahead and tape in October of 2020. And then it premiered uh, February, 2021. Now, um, um, when it came out, it was, you know, I, I couldn't beat the, the press and, yeah. and all the notoriety, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, the, the thing about, um, it being there and it happening for me, it showed people all over the country and out of the country right? Um, that who Barbara Carlisle is, was, and will be. Right. Um, so the unfortunate thing was uh, by the time, you know, it got some steam rolling, they completely shut the country down. So mm -hmm. we did not get a chance to go on tour. Um, and, you know, the surprising thing was I got more um, uh, interplay or uh, feedback from people from other countries, more so than the United States. Mm. And that was pretty shocking. I was like, oh, my God. All righty then. Mm. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. See, I told you you was worldwide. <laughs> yeah, worldwide. But I thought you was talking about my shape. No, I'm just. You know what? <laughs> shaped like the earth okay but uh <laughs> and that's the flat when it was flat <laughs> now it's good. no all right forget it but anyway oh, <laughs> the, but uh, it was um it was um a good special i would say overall so let me just for people who did, haven't watched it because you've been under a rock um the special featured let me see was six comedians including yourself well five including yourself yeah um I was seven because you have to count Tiffany. Oh, true, true. She hosted. Um, so it was yourself, Godfrey, Aaron Jackson, Tony Woods, Kimberly Clark, Dean Edwards, and uh, of course Tiffany mm -hmm. um, this season. 
So just take me through the process of how it was for you to even film the whole thing. Oh my God. Um, well, uh, Tiffany had said to me back when we were in Korea that mm -hmm. um, we would, that if anything ever happened, we supposedly made a vow. You know, I right, was right. lip syncing because <laughs> I figured, you know, I don't been in this business this long. If it ain't pop for me now, it ain't going to pop. Right. But um, so um, we made a vow uh, uh, that we would, if one of us made it, we would reach back and get the other. Mm -hmm. So when it happened the first time, I was like, you didn't know that about me. You know, and um, so uh, the second year, mm -hmm. she came. I mean, I was sitting home one day and she just called. And well, the first time she called, I didn't believe it was her. Really? Yeah, because it wasn't the number that I had for her. Okay, okay. You know, and uh, two, I know I had been duplicated and, and quadrupled and quintupled or whatever the word <laughs> is. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of Barbara Carlisle um, pages and all out there. My picture yeah. was not me. So, yeah. you know, it was hard to believe. And, you know, we were in the era where everybody was sitting home and couldn't go nowhere. So people had all that time on the internet and they was just stealing people's identities and mm -hmm. trying to hack everybody's thing. So I didn't know, you know, how, you know, somebody could have gotten my number and try to pretend they was her. Because, right, right. You know, it wasn't... Um, so when it happened again, and I and she left the number, and I called back, and she was like, "I've been trying to reach you." It was like, <laughs> "Wow!" So, and then she offered it to me, and I was like, "Oh my God, yes, yes, yes!" Right. And it just it came at a time when you know I was feeling like, "Okay, you've done all this, done all this, done all this." Uh, and I'm not being braggadocious or anything. Right. I'm just saying things were happening for people who were, I knew for a fight were less talented. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but nobody wants you till everybody wants you. That's so, right. Um, when that happened and uh, I had the chance, they, they uh, you know, the good thing about them was they wanted you to do material back from um, uh, uh, Def Jam and Comic View, okay, and some of your old stuff. So, um, um, you know, I just interspersed some stuff with it, you know, and history was made. Right, it it definitely was. Yeah, yeah. So I think whether anybody else thinks it, I really actually think it because you know, there's something. Even though, I mean, they just started putting all our Def Jams on and whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, Netflix was like, you know, that was like, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> so. I mean, I, what, like, what was the feeling that you had on the inside, though, while you were, while you were filming it? Because I know how you felt, like you said, at the time that it came, it, it was a time that you felt, you know, that you weren't getting what you deserved, probably. So, that this was God telling me that I stayed the course mm -hmm. and he was rewarding me because at the time I was also keeping three of my little cousins. Oh, okay. You know, and I was, you know, I was, you know, doing everything that, that, that was desired for them to get them through school and what all this kind of stuff. And then when this happened, you know, God paid me back a hundredfold. You know, that's right. So, um, and you know, um, there were times that I complained about yeah. it, but I still did it. Yeah. And you know, and I was rewarded. Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, I, it was it was like a zenith, but right. not the real zenith because right. you know it's not like I'm going to go and retire retirement. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say retarded, but <laughs> <laughs> retirement. But uh, I'm going to still stay the course and, and you know, try to, uh, you know, um, change a couple of things, change yeah. my perspective, try to go with it. I, I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to play that numbers game, though. Yeah, I'm yeah, definitely not. Um, I also um, last year 
in July, we got me and six other, five other comics got an opportunity to do a clean comedy. Okay. Taping. And we taped it in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, right. It was shameless laughter. Uh, the group came out of Detroit and they came, uh, they had done it in Detroit first and it premiered. And then they brought, they came down and they got us. It was Angelo Dundee, mm -hmm. uh, Tony Tone, Small Fire. Oh, uh, I love Small Fire. Yeah, me and uh, who am I missing? Angelo. Me and Small Fire were the only. Uh, Double D, the Gary O'Connor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we had a great time. It was it was wonderful. It hasn't come out yet. I don't know what the holdup is, but maybe because I was doing clean comedy, it'd be like this <laughs> this this a force. That ain't her. That can't be her. That can't be her. I ain't hear not one curse word. Uh-uh. 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 I'm telling you, they got to look again and make yeah, sure. Yeah, like, uh-uh, that's a fake. That's a fake. That ain't her. That ain't her. I don't care. Look like a sound like a, but it ain't her. <laughs> yeah, but it, that was great. But, you know, um, it, it was just so, I mean, sitting around waiting to tape um, mm -hmm. and going through in your head. Uh, what am I going to do? What I'm not going to do? Because what I did, because uh, we take two nights. Okay. And uh, uh, we had a monitor to, you know, let you uh, 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 remember the order of your jokes and whatever. Right. But, uh, I had decided I wasn't going to do certain jokes uh, because I was, I thought I was going to be caught up in some kind of, you know, legal thing because I yeah. had to take the CD and, uh, so um, that Friday night, I, I just prayed about it in my dressing room. And I was like, Lord, I, I'm just going to have to throw caution to the wind because I want people to know that, you know, I have other stuff. And, and yeah. there was so much material that I had out there that I didn't know when people would be able to see it. Mm -hmm. But at least it would be cataloged. Right. So I... I changed some of the jokes and now some of the ones I thought they were going to keep ended up on the cutting floor. Uh, mm. who knows it might show up again and you know how they come back and bring, you know, uh, outtakes or whatever. Maybe somebody yeah. smart enough to do something like that. But um, there was, there were um, some that I said, Oh, I know this is going to make it. And <laughs> the, Nope. Mm. Right. So on the actual um, on the actual one that we see on Netflix, I think yours and, and everybody else's is around like twenty minutes or so. Yeah, give or take a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So how long of a set did you actually do each night? Um, we we were slated to do like twenty twenty five. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know actually how long they let us roll. Oh, okay. okay. Um. I guess if the audience were going was going with you, they uh, kept it, you know. Okay. That you know, because some of us got 19 minutes, some of us got 22, some of us got yeah. Whatever, but you know, it was enough. Right, right. It, as long as it was some minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could have did five. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, man, <laughs> but I didn't care. Oh man, but that, I, I'm glad again, like I told you before, I was glad to see you, somebody that I know and, and said, you know, you deserve your just due for being an actual comedian that's funny. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's been here a long time, sometimes time doesn't equal good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But in your case, it, it does. So I was glad to see you on there as rest of the other comedians. Um, and it's, it's been a long time since we see you on a major, you know, network platform or whatever the mm -hmm. case may be. So I was like, Thank you. Like, I, guess, I guess you just haven't been on TikTok because TikTok was running my jokes like they were. They, it was theirs. But, yeah, you know, and the sad know. part about it was, even though I complained a lot, people don't care. They, they don't. They don't. Yeah, yeah, they're like, go ahead. You get your butt off here. Nobody care. Mm -hmm. But I'm laughing at the joke. On, on TikTok, I just seen, uh, matter of fact, a video of Monique uh, voice that they took. And they've been using that sound forever, but somebody just posted the original video. Everybody said, that's Monique. So I know I know what you mean, because they do that to my videos and interviews. If it's somebody that they love, they completely cut you out. 
yeah all kind of stuff and and, and may and, and 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 they have the lip syncing down right. some of them some of them don't you yeah know? it's crazy yeah, I, they were doing that little red riding hood oh my god if i could get the money <laughs> from all the videos from tiktok that has been generated people were dressing up people were doing this that or the other and they're just racking up and I'm not getting a dime. Yeah, you know, maybe some crazy. time in the future, uh, sound sound exchange will figure out a way for me to I go back so. and retrieve pennies or whatever. I you hope know. so, because it's it's crazy. And I think you know, I don't think there's anybody out there who does work and or does something that is their art or their craft or whatever puts it out to not get credit for it. I mean, even if you have a ghostwriter on a song, they even want credit for their stuff. So, you know, in the ideal world, we all want credit. But I, I'll ask this just to play devil advocate. Is there a part of you that's, you know, even though you're kind of upset that it's there because you're not being credited, is there a part of you that's glad that it's out there because it's still you? If there's a part, but when, when you have a mass of people who are going to certain pages, and and sharing and either sharing it or redoing it because mm -hmm. when they redo it that person that they got the sound bite from um gets gets um uh, credited again so they, they you know they're getting paid double you know and i was told yeah you can go do a side by side and do a a, 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 a duo where mm -hmm. you're doing the joke and somebody's doing the joke but I, why i got to do all that Right. When, I can go, when I can go buy a CD and play it in the background while I'm doing a live and Facebook and Instagram or whoever will come and say they'll mute it. Yep. I have to make, I have to, uh, make a, 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 a statement that says I do not own the rights to this. But mm -hmm. if I bought it out of the store, do I not own the right to play it in my house while I'm doing something? While I'm, I mean, we used to play the music while we clean up and do all kind of things. We play it in the car. Yep. If I can't play your music when I want to play your music, you know, I just got it playing in the background. I ain't trying to be you. I ain't trying to do nothing. It's right. just mellow music in the background. Something where you just sitting around lis listening to something. No different if I was having a conversation with you and you and I were in your living room. Mm -hmm. All the thing is, we're not on a video. I'm not exploiting these people. I'm playing a, a, a album that I bought. Yeah. I, I don't understand how it's uh, intervening with their, uh, but you don't think the same thing about a comic. Right, right. Why, why can't, um, but I, they also told me that if I could prove that it was mine, and I, you know, I got to go through all that to prove this. Right. It makes no sense. I don't own the rights. Well, what do I own? I own the CD. Right. <laughs> so I'm not supposed to play the CD because I don't own the rights. The, the laws that they're making is just it's I, crazy. It's beyond me, you know. It's crazy. Maybe if I was a singer, I, I'd, I'd see differently, but I just don't understand why it doesn't go from one genre to another. You know? Right, right. If it's not yours, don't bother it. Go out and do your own thing. Mm -hmm. But you know, they treat comedy different as a whole anyways. Yeah, I, it's like, I, oh, I, that ain't no real. Right, in the, in the world, comedy is treated different otherwise. Like, it's always separated from any, yeah. other, any yeah. other thing. Like, we are not a real art form. Right. <laughs> I can make <laughs> you laugh. To do. We are something to do. Yeah, 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 I can make you laugh, but I can't be... Um, I can't do nothing else. I can't, be I can't, I can't make no demands. That's right. <laughs> mm -mm. It's crazy. I can't stand there and tell you, you better laugh. Right. You know, make it make sense though. But it, I don't. I don't know. Hopefully, things will change with that for real too. Because it, like you said, there's so many people going around doing that, and and a lot of people don't even know, like to go back and say, "Oh, this is Barbara Carlyle joke." They think, well, that, you know, people have done that, and. Yeah. I've seen where the person who's doing it, uh, they'll come back and say, well, you know, I know it's not me, but uh, uh, people are just saying whatever. And then I, you know, I had to look at it from that perspective. Uh, at least it's out there. It's my voice. But 
the average Joe Blow, unless they know Barbara Carlisle and have seen yeah. Barbara Carlisle on all these different um, um, shows, they don't know it's Barbara Carlisle. You know it's Barbara Carlisle. All I ask is that you acknowledge me, say, this is taken from Barbara Carlisle on this. Right. You know, so the only thing I can do is when I find a clip, I throw it up on um, Instagram or Facebook or TikTok and say, and I don't get half the, <laughs> I mean, I'm the one that started it and, and I still get five views. I'm like, what the hell am I doing wrong? Yep, that's how it works. So, and you find somebody else. With, somebody's with your- got to win, somebody's got to lose. Right, right. I, I believe that in the future I will win because, man, if I don't, it's just it's sad state of circumstances. Yeah. Ask yeah. me where my followers at. Oh, I'm going to have to start sending you to all these other pages. You see okay. this? You see this? You see all these followers right here? You see how many times they did this joke? Exactly. That's my followers. <laughs> I'm telling you because it's, it, it's yours, but here you, you can't get credit for it. No, like, that's it. crazy. I seen somebody do that. With, uh, I, I found one of my interviews on some kind of website I had no idea about. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Like, I had to go and look at and see what it was. I still don't know what it is, but it's up there. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we got some people out here. They they are. They are fierce with it when it comes. Yes. And, and I mean fierce in a good way. Yeah. They can edit and chop it up, and I'll be like, dang, why can't I get them on my team? Right. Get me out there, like, instead of making them look good, make me look good, too. At right. Least acknowledge, just say, hey. And, you know, some people will come on and say, no, that's that's, that's not her. Mm-hmm. I remember that lady. She more country. Yeah, I mean, that ain't no compliment, but uh, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> uh, uh, no, that's Barbara Carlyle. Or oh, some people might say, oh, that's that lady. I don't know her name, but that's, you know, you know, so. But right, they, right. they, the people that do it, they'll gloss over that. Even if I put, hey, thank you for uh, keeping my joke alive, but at least mention my name. They don't eat, they answer everybody, but the ones that come and challenge that it may be them. That's you know? right. So I just had to start looking at it like, damn, they really don't care. Who yeah, they is. don't, they don't. They don't give say it. They don't I laugh and keep them moving. And if I like it enough, I'm gonna use it. There you go. <laughs> you know, that's what that's what that's exactly what they're doing. So yeah. for you to say, uh some promoter to say you ain't got no followers, oh I got followers. Yeah. They own somebody else's page. But I got yeah. yeah. But I can imagine um going back to the special too. Um how, has that helped increase uh, your viewership? Of course, um, but how has that in cha- How has that changed, or has it changed anything as far as you know you doing shows? Well, it has. Uh, my visibility uh, mm-hmm. is uh, up, but not like oh uh, oh uh, stress. Right, right. Is like uh up in a uh like a uh, what you call them blimp. <laughs> it's like blimp. It ain't you know up there with uh Elon Musk. Right, right. So it's uh, <laughs> it's still down here like a eh, balloon that you let go and it gets stuck in the tree. Right. <laughs> so ain't nobody go see it no more. Uh, you see the shrine, but you know. So uh, I think that if had we gotten the chance to go on tour, yeah, my name would be uh, just as popular as toilet tissue. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody so. know toilet tissue. They do. I would hope so. Yeah. Well, some people know leaf and washcloth and hand. <laughs> Sponge. <laughs> Sock. <laughs> Dapper. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is serious. Look, to, to each his own. Uh, hey, I, I don't yeah, I can't that, tell people. that's their that's that's their thing. You can't be uh, oh man, I'm right. but I'm I'm glad you you at least got to feel some of the effect from it with you know the people from out of country coming in and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though the, the shutdown happened and then you guys had uh you know the situation with Tiffany happened a, a little while after that. 
yeah. when she was in the news. So that kind of, I, I would imagine that might have affected you guys a little bit as well. Yeah, uh-huh. uh, but she's back on the rise again, and hopefully one day she will come and say, when she, once she get back to that plateau where she was, and I think it will be soon, she'll come back and say, hey, it's time for us to get on this road and do do the damn thing. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yes, hope, hopefully so, and then hopefully Netflix will come on and stop playing and give you your own special at this yeah, point. Yeah, well, you know, that's the way, that's the way it was supposed to be, because even with the first one, they were going by, you know, I guess the numbers of who whomever was the breakout star or whatever Mm -hmm. and you know i mean we all were hoping for it right yeah and uh so they didn't get a chance to do any other things and you know life just goes on and maybe it's just not the time you know yeah true at least i did it that's all i can say but you know i i'm looking uh forward to either doing some other special by yeah. myself uh, because you know I, I I sat and I thought about it and I was like man doing the comedy since the seventies I there are so many jokes that people have not heard that right. I bring back and even though it's dated I know how to make it you know modern yeah. mm-hmm. you know and there's always going to be an audience for it you know that the stuff that I was talking about in the earlier years and be like, oh, I remember this, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I, I hope so though, but you know, hopefully things will will keep looking up because I, I won't say they looking down. They already looking up. Yeah. So yeah, keep- I um one thing that did happen, uh, even though <laughs> nothing came of it, um, I got a lot of uh, uh, movie offers. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um I got a lot of callbacks uh, at the last minute. They was like, well, we went with someone else. But, you know, they didn't have to do it. Yeah, yeah. You true. know, um, I didn't call them. They called me. So, right. You know, oh, you would be perfect in this. Or you would be, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm glad about that kind of thing. You know, and I, I think I need to get my butt. Even though I started out as an actress in college, I think I need to get my butt back into somebody's thing. Uh, I don't want to be known as an actress, but you know, I will do. I mean, just let me walk across the screen, let, let, <laughs> you know, the, oh, and uh, uh, so the director can say, Cut! Hey. Now, you're supposed to keep walking. You do not stop <laughs> and look at the camera. You know, I did a movie, right? I did a slave movie. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I, did, I didn't uh, see it, but you, you did tell me about it, though. Yeah, the forerunner to. Uh, 12 Years a Slave, Solomon mm. Northop's Odyssey. I had one line, one line. Just but one. Hey, that one line. Oh, I was, I was a house slave. Oh. I had one line. I sure could use some help in the kitchen. <laughs> I practiced all night. Ah, sure could use some help in the kitchen. I sure could use some help in the kitchen. I sure could use some help in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> You laughing, man. I, I was I was a good looking slave. I don't care what you say. I was a sexy slave. Look, I believe you. I you believe you. Yeah, yeah. I don't you, know. Look, you know I never laugh at you, just with you. So yeah, uh-huh. I believe. Then yeah, you get off. <laughs> then you make up for it. Okay. There you go. But I believe you. But no, I, I think that's a good thing though. Sometimes what we what we don't necessarily aspire to do is probably what we excel in too. Yeah, that's the thing yeah. about it. That's true. But I, how has uh, I'm curious to know how has comedy changed for you as far as shows like out of the pandemic? Has like has things changed overall? How you have to do jokes? How does it feel like that kind of thing? Um, no, um, because I I did it all wrong business wise. Um, Forty five years of my life, I said you know, henceforth I'm not just you know taking what's offered to me uh, because I see the kind of money they're paying other people Mm -hmm. and money that I should have been making long, long, long time ago. And I have a credit that some of the people that are considered a list comics don't even have, and they're getting tens of thousands of dollars. I'm not even asking for that kind of money, but you know, um, 
I'm not settling anymore. Right, right. You know, I, I, I learned to be, uh, I'd rather sit on my butt. Yeah. So now I'll do um, favors for friends. Uh, if I feel like I need to just keep sharp, I'll go, you know, do some shows. But I'm not going to take what you offer me just because you feel like you can do like you used to do, you know. Mm -hmm. But if it's somebody that I know has been in my corner for a minute and it treated me right the whole time, I will, you know, go out and do something at a a lower rate especially if it's a place i've never been yeah yeah you know so but if somewhere that i've been and people know me and this and them, no move on right you gotta do what you gotta do yeah gotta do what you gotta do that's it but like you said you've been doing comedy a long time too so i'm curious because we all have our own definition of what success is mm -hmm. at this point in your life do you feel successful I felt successful for quite some time because I'm doing what I love to do. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm, I work possibly an hour out of a, a, a day doing a job if I had to go work. Mm -hmm. Now, sitting around, if you add all that time in, <laughs> I'm doing like a regular job. <laughs> so getting there and getting dressed and set up and whatever. But, um, I think I've been successful because a lot of people do know the Barbara Carlyle brand, the Barbara Carlyle name. I'm not um, a superstar, but I don't want to be a superstar. I don't. I, I want people to know me. To you know, if they see me, it's like, oh, you Barbara Carlyle, can I get this? I don't want to be the kind where people are like, oh my God, the Barbara Carlyle, oh, <laughs> you know, that no, right. I, I, I don't want that kind of. Fame. I just, yeah. you know. So I'm, I, I want to know this then. If, if you're not there right now, mm -hmm. during the Deaf Comedy Jam and Comic View days, did people ever act like that towards you? What you mean? Yeah. The, the falling out or acting crazy? Not like falling you. out, but you know, like, oh my God. I, I mean, even if I went into, uh, uh, places like Walmart or something yeah. like that, they'd follow me down the aisle till they got up the nerve to ask me. Even in my hometown, people will follow me around down the aisles and they'd be saying stuff like, what's she doing in here? <laughs> Open in Walmart. Like, I didn't like prices to be rolling back. <laughs> you know? But, uh, you know, people, people think they know what the business pays and what people, you know, they, they count your money. Oh yeah. How many times they see you doing something? Oh yeah. They don't know that you know comic B only paid one fifty, mm -hmm. you know. But they showed it. You couldn't beat the publicity. Now we're getting a residuals for it now. Okay. Okay. Uh, but um, Def Jam, uh, if you weren't, you know, if like back then I was not in SAG Af SAG after. Right. So you just get the bottom uh, line of whatever they were playing, but. Uh, People assume because they hear what other people are getting. Yeah. You know, like, you know, they was like, oh, I know you got that for $500,000. <laughs> Monique didn't even get the $500,000. She got more. Yeah, okay. But, uh, man, if I got $500,000, you think you'd be standing in my face talking to me? Come huh? on now. I'd be somewhere count. I can't count to 100000 but I don't. I I done went as far as I could and started again. I'm telling you, the roles. Look, if all if you got to start back over, start over. Start over. <laughs> Let somebody else help you kind of keep your gun <laughs> on them. But <laughs> you gotta have them. You know how the dope dealers have them in there with the, they bagging the dope. They, uh -huh. they, ain't they ain't got on nothing but the panties. That's, what, right. that's how you got to have them in there counting your money. Listen, I'm telling yeah. you, got to play the uh, what's his name, Nino Brown on. Nino Brown on. <laughs> yeah, got to do that. No. Oh man, I don't that's, that's crazy. Coming out of here with nothing, you know, somebody might drop it on the floor and put their foot on it and right. slide all the way out. Came in walking, but they sliding out. <laughs> you got a hundred dollar bill. Mm -mm, no. Oh lord, I don't, I don't want, I don't want those kind of rich man yeah yeah rich woman problems i have enough no. problems being broke 
imagine right. if I could get anything I want. You know, uh, uh-uh. uh, I, mm-mm. yeah, you know, you I, guess I just want to be able to do the things, have good credit, and, right? You know, it don't, it, it doesn't matter anymore because. They doing all kind of stuff to keep us down. Yeah, and we're helping them. We're helping them. So, yeah, you know, more money, more problems. Yeah, and, and you exactly. know, I used to think that was just a song that Biggie and, and Puffy did, and a saying that people used to say, but it actually is true because yeah. it, as soon as you get some, they go, they go. You something. would think that it would get you out of the uh, out of the rut, and you know, but no. you, now you got to deal with a whole different set mindset of somebody else yeah because you know they come with the oh you change you this you that you think you're better uh you know and all the things they think you have i yep. bet you got a big old house I <laughs> bet you got a i got a big old outhouse okay <laughs> <laughs> now i can put tissue in it instead of see us robot right but, um no um so you got to deal with what people the impression they have created of you. Yeah, yeah. You, know. you are. You know, I, I I have to go through people saying, oh, you know, you changed. No, I did not change. You stayed the same. You had the same 24 hours I had. So exactly. there's no reason why you can't get out and, and, and achieve what you want to achieve, but you limited yourself. Yeah. You know, I knew from the time when I was small that I wanted to be in some form of entertainment, whether that be an actress, uh, whether that be, I, I mean, I really didn't even consider stand-up comedy until uh, my drama instructor kept giving me the lead role in comedies. Mm-hmm. And they opened a comedy club and I started going down there. Mm. So that's how it began. Yeah, but you, you made the right choice because I don't, uh, again, you could be an actress, and I'm sure you can do well in that too. Yeah, I can, so, but but, I don't know. Hmm. but comedy, you you excel in. I can tell that though when you write jokes, I can still tell it's natural for you, even if what you're talking about is not even true. Yeah, That's how how good it is, you know what I'm saying? Everybody yeah. can't do that now. Like a lot of these people try to get on stage and come up with something, and you can tell like as forced or they made it up or something like that but when you do a joke it's like it flows it's yeah. like butter because you when they look at you they hear how you deliver that joke mm-hmm. they already know like this woman ain't playing she got to be serious she got to be serious and uh, you know and they don't understand like all through my set i'll go from being single to married to right two, and only <laughs> certain people will catch it they'll be like wait a minute didn't you say you were married Get up. <laughs> this is a joke. you know but yeah. Oh man. I, but I laughed about that that same thing the other day. I was telling one of my friends about you. And uh So you're I talking about you, me behind my back. Oh yeah, definitely. Because I, really? really? <laughs> I had to let them know to watch keep talking. I had to let them know to watch that special. That's why. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay. Well, good. Thank you. Every time you do that, cha ching. <laughs> okay. I have to go back and watch it myself sometime. I just let it run through because Yeah, just go on my go on my um my website, my YouTube page, and you see all the, uh, cause I, right now I have two um, Zooms that I do on uh, Fridays and Sundays. On Fridays I do Cougar Chronicles. Okay. And on Sundays I do Mask. Uh, Mask is making all souls kindred spirits. That's geared toward more serious topics. But on mm-hmm. Fridays, Cougar Chronicles, we just talk about whatever we talk about. <laughs> Okay, okay, and we've been doing it since the uh, country shut down. Okay, so yeah, p- y'all make sure y'all go and check that out. Please go check it out, um, and, and still make sure you watch the Netflix special, of course. Yeah. Um. And and matter of fact, you you are you streaming everywhere really because uh, Deaf Comedy Jam is on Tubi too. Yeah, um, Def Jam it's on Tubi. It's also on um, uh, HBO Max. Right. Um. Yeah. And the comic view thing, even if you go look at all the ones that are on there, we are, they're finally um, paying us for that, for people mm-hmm. stopping and looking at that. So, yeah. So you, you just doing it real big. You Michael Jackson big. You no, know, I ain't Michael Jackson. I, I'm <laughs> um, Mike Jackson. He, 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 he lived down the street. He real big. So. 
Right. The one I, don't, I, don't, I, tell you, I don't want to be Michael Jackson. You know, he and Prince and I were born in the same year. Uh huh. So we all would be 65 this year. Mm, yeah, so I told Prince you. Is, Prince's um, birthday is today, isn't today, it? Today, yep. Yeah. I just saw that too. Yeah, so all, he was all the oldest. Then came me in August, August 26th, and then came Michael, August 29th. Mm -hmm. So 1958 you was a very good year. Yeah, you in the midst of superstars. We yes, superstars. Yes, Come on yes, now. yes. So you can't talk about neither one of them, not around me. Uh -uh. <laughs> no negativity when it comes to either one of them. I tell people we were playmates. <laughs> Y'all was at this point. Yeah, I mean, who knows? We were oh, all man. destined for greatness, you know. Yeah, yeah. But you done a, you done a, a tremendous job um, in, in being yourself and still doing what you love. Not everybody can do that seriously. Yeah. A lot of people feel like they have to change because they want to make it somewhere and they want to get in with this person and that person. But at the end of the day, I knew when I talked to you that I said, oh, She's just a regular person. She is who she is. She's not changing who she is to try no, to I, I can't get in and stuff like that. So I mean, I don't know how to do it. I, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm too humble. I'm um, to a point. To to I'm humble to the point of always getting uh, messed over. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I I have to learn that everybody who calls themselves your friend is not your friend. That's right. Everybody who says they have your best interest at heart does not have your best interest at heart. True. Everybody yeah. that say they're going to come pick you up and take you out to eat, they don't show up. <laughs> Sometimes their girlfriends don't let them go. <laughs> so I'm telling you. I learned the hard way. It's real. So I just want to ask this. Of course, thinking back to like the Deaf Comedy Jam days and Comic View days, mm -hmm. um, that like I said before, that really was a special time in comedy. The '90s really picked up for comedy, yeah. Uh, at least in my eyes, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people really felt more comfortable. They really uh, thought more of it. They really wanted to see who was next, where you at, what are you doing, that kind of thing. Um, so when you think about your career as a whole, and you think about those days, and you see people come up to you and say, "Oh, that's Little Red Riding Hood," or "That's Naturalness" and stuff like that, what do you, what yeah. do you think about now? Well, I, I have a, a overwhelming sense of pride, mm -hmm. but um, even though that was a special time and even though it did get us out there, for a lot of us, it hurt us mm -hmm. because, you know, we were in back then, you know, we didn't have that many black um, comedy rooms. Yeah. So we were doing the mainstream rooms. And uh, once I crossed over in the 80s to the black comedy explosion, Mm -hmm. I was doing a lot more black rooms because again, they didn't have black clubs where we could do like a whole week or four or five days, you know, right. um, it was hard for me to get back into the comedy rooms mm. because now they, you know, even though they were still just letting us have special nights, basically like the middle of the week unless you were a name, name, name that they knew would bring people or whatever. You was a, a Eddie Murphy or right. uh, somebody, Arsenio, somebody like that. Uh, we were relegated to, you know, not being able to come back in because now, especially with Def Jam, when Def mm -hmm. Jam came out and the language was a whole lot harsher because Comic View, there were certain words we could not say. Okay. You know, I mean, they had a whole list. You said that you got cut. Mm -hmm. So when Def Jam came, Def Jam came uh, about, um, you they, you know, now it's like it was introduced to us like this is how Black people, you know, how this is our lingo. This is how we talk. Not yeah. saying everybody, everybody on there was doing... Um, blue humor or whatever but i'm saying it they could relate more right right because now you have people talk their own vernacular instead of getting up saying you know happen to you know put on their white voice right right it's world. true it's true because that's what it felt like when i when everybody watched it um 
you really feel like, okay, everybody is like, you at home, you kicking it, everybody is being yeah. who they want to be. Mm -hmm. And even when you came out with your set and you said, I got to do a few proverbial FUs, <laughs> some of y'all like, it, it just felt like, okay, that's my auntie cussing me out, you know? So you yeah, felt like, all right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but the, uh, um, so that is the one thing that I, I don't regret it, but I, I wonder how it would have been had I, you know, stayed in, but that I was getting so much work. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. You know, and um, and and I was slowly coming up that ladder. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was hard to go back, and and then the, and you know, after a while, you started noticing the hate. Yeah, and, and the backstabbing. You know, yeah. um, they would only allow certain people, and and jealousy, jealousy, is a terrible thing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when. I think sometimes people would rather downplay somebody's um, abilities mm -hmm. than to give them their props. Yeah. And, you know, um, even, even during that time, you know, all the isms came in, racism, sexism, you know, get, you know, uh, everything, everything was just, you know, the, the the male comics will turn the female comics against the uh, veteran comics. No matter how you try to help them, you know they would rather listen to, you know. And I've always been uh, one of those people that you know, if I felt like you know you really wanted to do this, I'm gonna jump in and help you. I'm gonna tell you at you know after a show, hey, do this joke this way, mm -hmm. and watch it change or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I was one of those people that you could come to. And I always had a, a, a willing ear, I, you know, treated you nice, never did anything wrong to anybody. Um, but it uh, after a while, you know, even though you are who you are, people are going to make you out to be who you aren't. That's right. Just by, just by you know, uh, everybody think guns uh, uh, is, is the uh, number one killer of people. But it's, yeah. yeah, that's the most fierce weapon in the world. Mm -hmm. Somebody whisper a lie to somebody else. It's hard to undo that lie. And, and after a while, you have to just tell yourself, you know what? People going to believe what they want to believe. Right. I'm just going to keep on climbing. Yeah, because the moment you start He's rising to the top. <laughs> give it all you got. Give it all you got. That's right. Yeah. Because the moment you try to fight it, though, it it, it turned into a war. Yeah. And, and and it's like you fighting to prove that that you what they are you. Is wrong. And then after a while, you got to say to yourself, you know what? They're gonna believe what they want to believe. No. And and then they end up always coming back, wanting to apologize. And one thing yeah. about me. I forgive, but I don't forget. That's right. And and, and it's not to say that I hold grudges, but right. now I look at you in a different light. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm still going to be respectful of you. I'm still going to be polite, courteous, whatever. If you need help, I'm going to help you. But I know I can only give you a, a little bit off my spoon. I'm not mm -hmm. giving you a long handle spoon. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to use baby spoon. There you go. Give you a little bit and say, hey, go, go to sleep. <laughs> you fool. That's you can't get no more here. You know, and, and it's not it's not my fault, it's their fault. Because I have I I made sure uh, if I didn't do anything else in this business, I wanted to remain humble and just do whatever it was that was ordained for me to do. Yeah. And I think that after 46 years of doing this and doing it consistently you know uh, that this is what I'm supposed to do mm -hmm. I think so. God's people and you know let them of course 45 to 60 minutes just let them forget all their problems all their mm -hmm. issues, you know not yeah. just me whoever's on the show you know right right you got Alpha, you got Omega, you got the in-between. You know, if the host and the headliner are great, you ain't got to worry about nothing else. That's it. 
but it didn't you got do. people who want to be competitive right they don't know why they can't be the headliner instead of we we trying to put on a great show as a whole we try to put on a great show and then you have the comics that you know they'll get a budget mm -hmm. so they keep the lion's share of the money and get beginning comics and put them on the show mm -hmm. so they don't share the wealth no, Eric, it's, it's, it's sad that a lot of the industries and entertainment as a whole is really turning into a greed thing. Yeah. Not to say it wasn't there before, but now I think it, it has increased tremendously. Yeah. I, I, it's crazy because I don't even be in some of these rooms of me, so I still see some of that stuff happening. So mm -hmm. it's it's just crazy how it happens instead of you. And, and it's people like us that walk in a room with a pure heart saying, no, just give me what you can, or give me this, or give me, and, yeah, and here they is over here give saying, me a chance, you know. Right, and and here they is over here saying, uh, well, give his ass five dollars, give me, give me 50. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 well, you don't want her, uh, uh, she, she charged too much. And I can't believe that promoters will come back and say, I was like, how do you think I discuss what I make with them? Right. Make it make sense. Uh, uh, if it, it's not that uh, another classic uh, thing they say was, well, comics say they didn't have your number. This was before, you know, <laughs> the internet and all, all the different things where people could just text you and just, you know, I'm like, comics don't have my number. Right. I cannot believe that. Mm -hmm. They know? didn't want to have it. I know. They, they, they want either want to do your jokes or they are scared you, they won't be the person no more if you come through, you know. Okay. Come on. I always said when I was like, well, dang, you know, this person has had this room for a while. They have not reached out to me. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. That that greed jumps in quick. And it's sad amongst our people too. Yes. That, that it happens really, really bad. Uh, as if sharing will downplay who you are, or what you do. Like it's enough for everybody. It's so many people in this world who don't know you, who you could still reach and be yourself yeah. without trying to be greedy. You know what I'm saying? And and the sad part about it is, you know, um, I'm more like, I'm going to put on the show who I think is going to do a good show. Right. When I realize the people that I use ain't working, I'm going to step to them and say, hey, do this, do that, do that. And if they don't want to listen, hey, okay, you need to be replaced. Right. Because I I'm concerned about the audience and how what how they are going to feel. Not mm -hmm. to say that somebody's not going to have a bad uh, a bad night. I've had bad nights. Of course, they were few and far between. <laughs> but I had them. Of course, you know. Um, but every time I have a bad night, I make sure the next three, four, five shows that I do won't be there. A repeat of that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it hasn't been a point that many times where it's just been a solid, you know, nothing good. Yeah. Where you just really you did the bomb thing, the Iranian. <laughs> 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 just blowed everything up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But as far as um, telling jokes themselves, right? Um, like you said, in the 90s, you had all the isms with racism and different stuff happening. And you still have that. Right, right. And of course, now today, things have changed tremendously. You have stuff now where a lot of people get canceled for saying stuff about the culture, yeah. community and stuff like that. Um, do that's you that's feel just like uh, that jumping on the bandwagon kind of right. thing. You know, people love to pretend that they can sit behind a computer screen and be an authority on something right you know and and when they can put their little two cents in and say this that or not, i don't know any of the thing about it i haven't read anything about it but they can make a statement about it because their life mm -hmm. is not what they want it to be yeah. but um with people saying you know if you say this or you do this we're not gonna mess with you no more well you weren't messing with me before so exactly. you think it matters? I'm still going to have my opinion, regardless. You don't like it, don't follow me. Don't, don't, you see my name on the marquee, don't even come in. Don't buy no ticket. 
Okay. But you are not going to sh- shut me down by saying, okay, we're going to stop talking about her because she said this or she said that. Mm-hmm. I, what happened to freedom of speech? I know how far to take a joke. I know, but people are letting other people determine how they should think, how they should feel, and yep. how they should act. Yeah. And we don't have to answer to anybody but God. Mm-hmm. And if he ain't pleased, he'll let you know. That's right. Come on now. That's the I, that's the way I feel. Yeah. Life. You know, I, it's crazy to to see something like that now. In a way, a very very small one. It could possibly be a good thing for the people who who talk crazy, not in comedy, but who just you know blurt out uh, hateful things. Um, but you get to the point where you have people like, you know, the comedians where you want to cancel them for making a joke. And it's like, some, sometimes you have people tell a joke and, and they're like, this joke is 15 years old, or, you know, this is an old joke. I've been doing this. Why, why are you even coming uh, now? You, you never said anything, but yeah. everybody wants to be a hall monitor. <laughs> so they couldn't in school. <laughs> you remember when the teacher used to leave out the room? Mm-hmm. And point out who can go up and take names. <laughs> yep. You couldn't do nothing. They had your name on that board. Yep, that power. A they lot could. of people never got to be a hall a, a, a room monitor. They never got to be a hall monitor. They <laughs> never got to be the person that let the children go across the street. <laughs> they never got to be a leader so they can sit behind their computer screen. Yes and be anything they want to be with the stroke of a pen. Hmm. And don't let them be a little articulate or know how to put words together. Oh, my God. Now they're on the party. It's over with. (laughs) They are party now. (laughs) You can't tell them nothing. Can't tell them nothing. Can't hit them in the butt with a red apple. (laughs) Not even a yellow one. It's crazy. All green one. But <laughs> Washington one. Oh, a crab apple. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I man, but I just, I, I'm just. <laughs> I just got to stop one. laughing during the interview. This is a serious interview. You know, you're right. That's right. <laughs> mm. I just got two more questions for you, though. Then I'm, I'm gonna let you go. Oh, but, two more questions. Yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna hold you all night, but um, that's what he said. <laughs> yeah, but you could have done it longer than three minutes. So. <laughs> oh god! So th- the first one I got for you is like, what's next for you, uh, in your career? Because you you know you done it all. You already uh, you know. Well, I don't think that I've done it at all because even in just in the United States. Yeah. There's so many states that I've never, they don't know the essence of Barbara Carlisle. They don't know, you know, what she stands for, who she is, and can she do a good show, you know? So there are a lot of clubs that I would like to frequent uh, at least once. Give me a chance. Give me an off night. Mm-hmm. Let me come in on a Tuesday, Wednesday, one of those days like they used to do us back in the day when they used to have like the creative run. You know, right, the, right. The black comics would come through and do, you know, the off nights. And, and when they realized it was a money maker, and we talk about this at the end of Day Ready 2 when yeah. we talk about our experiences. Um, give me a chance to come show you what Barbara Carla can do. Stop listening if that's the, what you're doing. But when people get into a position of of having to pick and choose who they can bring through. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they overlook the real for the bullshit. Right. And you never get to see the real because you've listened to the bullshit. Mm-hmm. Give me a chance to let me come in and do my own jokes. I, there have been several times where people have come back and say, oh, this person did this, or this person did that, and whatever. Or, and when you confront them, it's like, well, I, I didn't think that was your joke. I thought it was somebody else. But you're still doing somebody else's joke. Right. How you didn't think it was my joke when you was on the show with me? <laughs> <laughs> still, 
still and be joke, and, and the thing about it is the joke don't even fit them. Right. They don't know. And you can't everybody can't do everything because I tell you no know, lie, I sit up and watch some of those comedy shows, even some of the ones I watch on YouTube up to date, but even the older ones. Some of those comedians, and it wasn't even that they wasn't funny. It was just a delivery because somebody else might use that joke and it'll hit. Yeah, it'll hit. So, but you can't, everybody can't do everything. So you you have to stay in your lane with that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But that's everybody, I, I know what you're trying to say. Uh everybody can't be Bob Tala. There you go. There you go. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the ticket. That's that's it. Mm. <laughs> Profound. Oh, man. I ain't gonna cancel cooks when you go through say that. There you go. Please don't, because I don't got nothing to give y'all. Yeah, I, I, I I can't do nothing but but uh play to the rest of the celebrities and file for bankruptcy on you because you can't get nothing from me. No, nah, I ain't gonna get nothing from you. I'm just gonna cancel. <laughs> no, no, don't no. go listen to the Tony Harley. <laughs> Look, you you uh you won't be doing me a disservice because they don't do that already. No, 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 no. This <laughs> oh, that's all right. It's gonna catch up. It's gonna catch up. Don't worry about it. Because yeah, yeah, you know, there's so many people out there doing it that you got to weed through. And you know, the, one of the things I hate is when people come on and they have a platform, and all they're doing is taking other people's stuff and and piecing it together. Yep. to form a, a, a thing like they really know what happened like mm-hmm. all the stuff that's coming out by jamie fox god bless him you know that's special to my heart because that's he was my host for deaf comedy jam right um but um when i see that kind of stuff and they try to pretend and how the people because i we are we are just so uh we're, we're in tune to trying to be in everybody's business, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and we want to be the one to reprimand them and tell them what they need to do and yep. what they should be doing. People can't just have fun without other people just tearing them apart. Like their life is so put together. Man. Yeah. And, that's, and, and that's so many people now. pass judgment um, without even really knowing. Mm-hmm. Like the person, because they, because they see you doing like the kind of jokes, blue humor, or you say some words, they see you in church. It's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> like they, <laughs> hey, I scared you when I jumped, didn't I? <laughs> well, she in church, she sang it in church. Okay. okay. It's crazy. Oh, man. But, like, hey, you're not supposed to go to church. Too. I ain't supposed to go to church. I, I, they want me to just go to churches. <laughs> Pass. They jalapeno instead of hallelujah. You go to oh, church. church. <laughs> <sighs> I can't. I can't with our people. I really can't. Right. It's crazy. But that's the culture now, unfortunately, that, you know, everybody feels like they have to watch everything yeah. somebody do. Everybody is somebody else's watch. Oh. They sweep around your own door. There you go. Worry you about what's happening. Stop worrying. Stop counting my money that I don't have. Stop wondering what kind of house you got. I bet you got a big old car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah right. got six times instead of four. Yeah, right until they see that 98 Honda Accord. A Honda Accord, baby. <laughs> With no GPS. Exactly. I still got to stop by the road and ask people, how you get to? Oh, man. That's, the That's crazy, though. It's crazy. It is crazy. It is. It's <laughs> the world, and it's getting crazy. You know, it is. You got all the smoke over coming from Canada. What, what's on fire? I have no idea. I see uh, some brush fires over there. I don't even know what it is. Well, what's, that? what's in the brush? I, I... <laughs> come over here yellow and what they burning, sulfur? I'm trying, I'm trying to see what the hell is making the smoke yellow. Oh, man. But they cover New York. Excuse me. They covered the whole New York, it looked like. So but wait a minute, though. New York is not the only state that's, that's by Canada. You got Detroit, you got Seattle. Right. Are, are they having the same problem in those areas? I, don't, I have no idea. I just oh, It depends on where the fire is. Yeah, I just seen the one about New York. Um, yeah, New York was in a, a real, and I don't think that's coming from over there. 
Mm-hmm. They smoke over there is regular color. <laughs> I think they done dropped some stuff. Well, them people got enough problems in New York already. Yeah, didn't and what are they doing about the homeless? They're telling people to stay in. Are you getting the homeless off the streets and putting them in some no. shelters? Or, I, I guess know. not, because they're sending all the uh, immigrants, putting them on airplanes. Now, if you can afford to put them on planes to send them to another state, hmm. you can afford to put them in somewhere. I I, I don't understand. I yeah. You know, and the, the, the thing I have to stop doing is being a, a, a bleeding heart person. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to realize that a lot of stuff is supposed to happen and there's nothing I can do about it except yeah. pray. It's because it's unfortunate. Right. Even um, yeah. in, in LA, I, I was just talking to somebody, I forgot who that was, um, the other day. And, and uh, I was talking about the homeless people over there. And I'm like, how? I seen a video on TikTok, no lie. A video showed and said, these buildings right here are billion dollar buildings and they panned it around literally just a block or two over and all is skid row. And I'm like, how is that happening? How? Like, it's no way. Oh, it, they'll be over the skid row soon. They'll okay. move them over somewhere else and build some more stuff. Yeah. And I don't know how we they're saying we don't have this, we don't have money, we don't have this, but whatever. But they're building stuff every day. Every single new day. apartments, new uh, uh, hotels, everything. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, somebody got some money. Come on now. But we ain't got no no real good health care. We, we really don't have People are living in despair. It's it's just I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. And, I, and I can I can really see how it's more important to kids to use this. This is their job. Right. You know, uh I can't play basketball, I can't do this and I can't do that, but I'm I'm a whiz when it comes to this social media. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna be an influencer and they get that money up. Uh, is they out there braiding hair or they out there trying to play basketball and do all that and not go to Burger King and right. not go to the jobs that are not paying any money when they can just sit on there behind or walk around and think of something to do or something to mm-hmm. say. Do half of them be killing themselves, but <laughs> hey, the video still be there. It do. It really go viral then. Yeah, it, unfortunately, it does. That's what's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is. It, it's unfortunate as well. That's so. crazy, man. But I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, do my last question. Okay. And uh, I think that one will be just what was the biggest lesson that you've learned in your career that you've taken through your career? To put uh, business before pleasure, and when mm. I say pleasure, I meant I love the game more than I love the money. Mm-hmm. whenever there was an opportunity for me to do comedy, especially okay uh, when there was an opportunity for me to do comedy, especially um, um, in a new area yeah, I jumped on it, you know didn't care about the money, I just want to be seen, I just want to mm-hmm. work my craft but people you teach people how to treat you yeah and so now the same people that I was doing supposed favors for hmm. now want to put, you know, um, um, using all kind of things to keep me from rising. Yeah. You know, hmm. um, you, you'll sit and call me a veteran all day or a, a, a legend, but you, you don't want to pay me like a legend. Yeah. You don't want to treat me like a legend. You want to keep me in the background and act like I don't matter. Mm-hmm. But somehow I keep squeezing through the cracks. That's right. You know. Yes. But I think that's a good one, though. Uh, I think for anybody, because sometimes we do get in that mindset of, you know, well, this might get me over here. Mm-hmm. Well, let me just do this because, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But it, and like I said, it's people like me, you thinking that way and other people are thinking about their business first. They're not thinking yeah. Yeah. So, and you I, can't get mad at the ones who are getting the money because they put, you know, they stand 
firm on it. Oh yeah. You uh, you live and you learn. So all right then. I, I guess that's all for tonight. Well, but thank just... you so very much for coming back and pulling me out of the woodworks to see <laughs> what have I what I've accomplished. Uh, <laughs> I have big lips. Some words just I have a hard time. All I done done. <laughs> there you go. In the past three years, okay. Yes, yes. Well, just let everybody know where they can find you on your social media handles, your Facebook. Okay. Uh, on on uh, Instagram, um, Barbara Eyes Funny, B A R B A R A E Y E Z Funny. Um, Facebook is Barbara Carlisle, of course. Uh, TikTok, the real Barbara Carlisle. And um, I do. Uh, if you go to Like Minds, M I N D Z. 420.com backslash Bob Carlisle. It will take you to my Zoom, which is uh, Mask and uh, Cougar Chronicles. Okay. That's it. Oh, and I have a YouTube, the uh, Bob Carlisle official, where you'll find everything. So that's it. And ladies and gentlemen, of course, this is none other than the legend herself, Miss Barbara Carlisle. Thank you again. Thank you, darling. Good night. <laughs>